And so we give you praise, we exalt your name. And we ask that you take us further in this adventure of faith. Let that which is hidden be brought forth to light. Let that, that which smote, be arrested. Let that which previously was a mountain be made low. And with that, let that which was a valley and a, min, a mystery be elevated. We ask that you demystify the workings of darkness in secret places. Shed light upon that which is hidden. Bring it forth so that you can empower your people to defeat the wiles of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome back. You may be seated. God bless you. All right, let's refresh ourselves, our memory, with a few cardinal scriptures that we have looked upon during the course of this presentation as we make effort to continue from where we have stopped. Psalms 50, verse number 5. Psalms 50, verse number 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Gather my saints unto me. Not all the saints, not everyone that met Jesus on the crusade ground, but such that are ready to make a covenant with him, to interact with him by, by sacrifice. And I told you that the dialect, that, the, that spirit beings can understand, is the dialect of sacrifice. All right, so where do we stop? Number what? In our teaching. Setting up a personal altar. Where are we? Oh, you are not following. All right, since you are not following, we will stop at number seven. It's supposed to be 12. So, but when I reach number seven, I'll stop. And then I go into other matters because you are not keeping record of the numbers. Now, I don't know. Where did we stop? Number what? No, the issue of headship and inheritance uh, was a digression that I made so as to situate the premises upon which demons and the kingdom of darkness derives their authority upon which they stand to afflict, upon which they stand to administer judgment. I think we are supposed to be in number three. Okay, number four, number four, all altars are powered by the sacrifices of the human attendant that services it. All altars are powered. The strength of your altar is determined by the sacrifices that you present upon it. And as I will show you in a moment, you realize that there is no problem among men, that there is no suitable sacrifice from God that can dissolve it. As long as that problem is a human problem, there is a corresponding sacrifice that you can make available that will move the hand of God to intervene on such matters. Are you still here? So the Bible says, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, if we go deeper, we will look at the situation of man after the fall. When we look at the situation of man after the fall, 
you will realize that his condition was in a permanent state of disrepair. But God who understands how to manipulate things, he arranged for a sacrifice, a sacrifice that could undo the legitimacy of the situation. And through that sacrifice, he made a way of escape. That is to tell us that for every challenge that you are passing through, if you understand the spiritual sacrifices that can be offered, you can actually defeat that challenge. Now, I need to show you a few scriptures before we begin to journey. I still need to draw your attention quietly to the book of 1 Peter. Are you still with me in 1 Peter? 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. He says in verse 5, that ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood, and our preoccupation as this holy priesthood is to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. The very preoccupation of our priesthood is tied to the intelligence behind the sacrifices that we offer. If we know the adequate sacrifices to offer, we have the capacity to reverse any human challenge whatsoever. You see, there are so many things that you can do without knowledge. You can praise God without knowledge. You can do so many things that will be accepted in the presence of God without knowledge. But priesthood is built on intelligence. It is impossible for you to be an effective priest without the intelligence that is needed to suggest to you what kind of sacrifice you need to offer in order for you to circumvent, to establish a siege against the siege of the devil that has competence and stature to swallow up what Satan is doing. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Okay, let's go to the business of the day. Let us start with 1 Samuel chapter 7. And I'd like us to look at the critical nature of the circumstance that the children of Israel found themselves. It's a critical situation here. And there was a way the prophet Samuel attended to the matter. If we look at that, we'll be able to draw up a few requirements, a few requirements needed to meet the opposition of life's challenges. First uh, Samuel chapter 7, beginning from verse number 3. First Samuel 7, beginning from First Samuel 7, beginning from verse number 3. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and ask the rot from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. On the line only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So deliverance is supposed to be a direct effect of a com complete committal to the will of God. Anyone that decides to completely commit himself to God is sure of deliverance. Even if Satan makes an attempt at you. There is a guarantee that you have 
that the attempts will be heavily laden with miscalculations. Sometimes you might see the effect of the attack, but it would not amount to what Satan intended originally, for which he formulated the attack against your life. Living for God is a basis of security. Meanwhile, let's go on. Then the children of Israel did put away Balim and Ashtaroth and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said, there we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered to, together to Mishpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said unto Samuel, Cease not to pray unto the Lord our God for us, that he may save us out of the hand of of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. And the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines, and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. Somewhere knew the offering, the sacrifice to offer. <laughs> These guys were in a state of national prayer. And when their enemies heard that they had gathered for prayer, they said, this is the opportunity we'll be looking for. They are defenseless. They are in a state of devotion. They are trying to seek supernatural help. And there is no instrument under these circumstances that is as strong as a sword. So while they are praying, we slaughter. Samuel refused to end the prayer meeting, even though intelligence had come from the field that the Philistines want to take advantage of our moment of devotion to break out on us. He did not end the prayer meeting. He did not announce suddenly that uh, we are in danger. Let every man take off like a tornado. What he did was that he fetched a sacrifice. If, if God, are you with me? Please help me preach to your neighbor. There is no human problem that cannot be defeated by an accurate sacrifice. If you linger in the problem, it is a proof of the fact that you do not know the spirit, the supervising spirit of your altar intimately. Keep preaching, keep preaching. If the problem lingers, it is suggestive of the fact that you have no knowledge of the supervising spirit of your altar. Part of the responsibility of the supervising spirit of your altar is to provide intelligence to you as to what sacrifice is required to discomfit the issue that is at hand. It's on the basis of, of things like this that building it, intimacy with God becomes a very strategic spiritual currency that a believer needs to get ahead in life. I was expecting Samuel to break the prayer meeting and say, you know what, we're in danger. Even the prophet himself needs to escape at this time. The majesty with which Samuel conducted himself under that pressure was indicative of the fact that he knew 
he was in league with the God of all answers. The supervising spirit of his altar came and gave him a prescription. If you want me to move and to break out like thunder, don't look for an old cow. Look for a cow that they just gave birth to that is still tender, the bones are soft. It is full of life. It is full of, of prospect. Look for that one and sacrifice it. The moment, in fact, the Philistines, as the procession was going on, they were drawing closer. And it, in fact, they were already premeditating how the, the slaughter was going to be. But un, unknown to them, when the sacrifice was activated, the, the closer you were to the altar of sacrifice, the more intense the vengeance was on your life. The question I have to ask today is how did Samuel know what sacrifice was required? This was a day where victory was won from a battle without anyone having to fight whatsoever. Samuel, because of priesthood, brought spiritual battles, he brought physical battles into the spiritual arena such that there was no need to wield any weapon in order to win a battle. Samuel proved to Israel that it was possible for us to win battles without weapons. Samuel proved to Israel that the basis of the territorial integrity that Israel enjoyed was not because they had a thriving military. It was the priesthood of Samuel, and the Bible says that all the days of Samuel, when he was active in ministry, there was peace around the borders of, of Israel. Not because of military might, not because they had weapons that could match their enemies, but because they had a priest <laughs> that was very vast in the ways of priesthood, and he knew how to move the hand of his supervising spirit. If you are still with me, say amen. The practicals we are doing this week is how to move the hand of a spirit being. Because you didn't say amen, we will postpone it. <laughs> we will postpone it. <laughs> there was a place in Kogi State that we went to pray. The tribe in Kogi State that we went to pray, there, there's a place which is a tribe is there. And this tribe, they have seven spirits, sorry, nine spirits or nine masquerades in that tribe. Now, when we say masquerades, we are talking about necromancy, the ability to invoke the spirits of the dead. Uh, Maybe before the end, that's what the Idoma people call Aleku. They have different names in different cultures, but it's the same necromancy. So the house we went to pray, one of the masquerades were had residence in that place. Now, I, I need to tell you about this masquerade. The real shrine of the masquerade was in the compound, but when they want to invoke the spirits of the dead, they bring another small shrine and they put it in the center of the compound. Maybe you, what's your name? What? Israel, okay. What's your name? Shilo. Shidok. Shino. Okay. All right, so we have one brother here, brother Israel, we have brother Shino. Let's say two of you are from that village. 
and you are having a land dispute with Brother Shino. The way they solve it there, they don't go to court. They bring that shrine and they put it on the ground. So you, you will come and tell your own story that the land, my grandfather bought it from Shino's grandfather. Say, okay. Shino too will come and say, yes, his, own, his grandfather did not sell any land. Okay, no problem. When they put the shrine here, you think, they will go and bring all the, all the items for the sacrifice. Tortoise. How many of you have seen a live tortoise? Okay, no, let's not do it like that. How many of you have not seen a tortoise, a fiscal tortoise? Let's start with you. So they bring tortoise. Do you, have you, do you know <laughs> the blood of a tortoise? Okay. So they, they buy the items. You wait for market day. You go into the bush, the bush market. That's when you get tortoise. You get some things. And when, when they come and they begin the incantation, begin the incantation, begin the incantation, after they are through with the incantation, then they begin the appeasement to ask for mercy from all the spirits. And they get a nod that, okay, we are okay. Then they now begin libation. They give them hot drink. The mission is now, say, this is your portion. This is your portion. Bring food. Say. They cook soup. The people that we cook are not have meat, but when they are giving idols, they, they, they smith, they say. say. When they have done that, then they will now finish the incantation and do something on that little shrine. They will invoke your own grandfather. And if you knew him while you were alive, it is his voice that will be speaking. And I'm not saying the, the, the spirit will possess somebody and begin to speak to the person. His voice will come out of that small shrine. And everybody that is in the vicinity will hear the voice of your grandfather. When they finish with your grandfather, they will invoke his own. Two of you will be there. That's how they solve land dispute in that place. At the end of the day, those two voices will begin to talk how the land was sold, how much it was sold for. The matter has ended. They use that thing to solve uh, marital problems. They will call the, the wife. They will go and look for her in the farm and bring her that. Your father is calling you. She will come and kneel down. See, I am so, my heart is broken at the things I am hearing. The father's voice, the late, you are not following, you are not following. <laughs> you know what? Those guys that serve the devil, they know the sacrifices that they need to put in place in order to draw his presence. They are so sure of it. In the same location, there is a certain masquerade that will just bring that masquerade. It's like a mat and put it on the ground. Then they will do the incantation, do the incantation. Then that mat will start growing up. Start, start rise, start rise. It will rise until the height of this building. But they brought it as a mat. It, they, they just folded it and uh, brought it. <laughs> now, so Samuel knew God like that. You know the problem? We preach too much, but we don't know God. Because if you know God, you should be able to know how to move his hand in your situation. How to move his hand in your circumstances. It's not about how, how long you'll be going to church. It's how much you know God. I want to imagine how many times the Philistines would have brought witches together and said, cause somewhere to die. Because as, <laughs> as long as this man is alive, he knows the secrets of God. He can pitch the spirit over their nation against us. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone sent me a message that some witches gathered and they are raining curses on me that let something terrible happen to me because <laughs> hey, I don't know how to get back to the witches. I, I would have 
Ask the people to send them pure water to drink. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This spiritual battle is real. I know most of you think it's intellectual, you know. But the purpose of the teaching this week is to show that if you know God, how you profit from your intimacy with God is that you can know from him what he will accept in order for him to move his hand when you are under a practical situation. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it upon a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. Are you there? Someone sent me a text message. A friend of mine sent me, and then the end of the message was that our light has come. And as I read the text message, I saw an altar. This one is in a vision. I told him, your light has not yet come. There is still an altar that you need to defeat. When you defeat it, these are the symptoms you are going to see. One, two, three, four, five. Then in that day, you can say your light. You know, we are used in church, we, we are used to positive thinking. Positive thinking cannot preserve your destiny. It is the knowledge of God that can preserve your destiny. We were taught in church, don't say negative things, just say positive. Okay, I am a champion, I am a champion, I am a champion, I am a champion, I am a winner, I am a winner, I am a winner. If that does not affect, <laughs> does not affect the authors. <laughs> I stopped all, those, all those, 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 those things. It's for children that are looking for excitement. When you begin to do business in great waters, you will see the foolishness that is in the maintenance systems that they used to keep us in charismatic cages. I'm a champion. Say, I'm a champion. I'm a winner. <laughs> May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. I told you my story that anybody that gets to 21 years old in my family, something terrible happens to, to the person. Our firstborn became 21 years old in University of Joss. He became schizophrenic. Those of you that are in the medical sciences, you know what it means to be schizophrenic. It was a, me a mental condition. Are you there? Second born became 21. This leg became two times as fat as this leg. The doctor said that the leg should be amputated. Then a prophet came to visit my mother and told her that if she can fast for three days, her daughter will be free. So my mother fasted for three days. On the third day, which was the day of the surgery, they took her to General Hospital, which is Federal Medical Center now. And the surgeons began to argue. So the one that was supposed to operate now left. Then the one that was coming to confront this surgeon that his diagnosis was wrong was left. So okay, we are going to open the leg and see what is inside. Then we'll close it up. So they opened the leg and saw pores. You know pores? Half bucket full. You know bucket? Half of it was, when they drained it out, it was half bucket. They cleaned up the pulse, stitched back the leg, and when the wound healed, the stitch, the stitch points disappeared. See, today, I know you didn't hear me. That sacrifice that was offered 
it counteracted the mystery that was at work in the life of my sister. My sister would have been walking with crutches today with an amputated left leg if that fasting did not take place. The prophet that came to speak with my mom knew God and knew what was required to move his hand. I've seen many people that died for free. It was not their time to die on the calendar, but they had no prophet that could peep into the secrets of God. So Satan prospered in that day. Our third born got to 21, and he was diagnosed with a condition. He had a condition that could not be diagnosed. They even took samples from his body to, to medical laboratories in London. They could not decipher what was killing this young man. I was present when my elder brother became schizophrenic. That's when I discovered that the unwritten law that we did not read in my family was that nobody should study medicine. Because my son, name you know the meaning. You know the meaning? It has to do, it's a deep meaning, it's a deep meaning. And it's not the name you hear that is my son name. The white men helped us to change it. You know, there is no S in the alphabet of my dialect. People that are from there, you know what I'm talking about. So you know that name is strange. It's not in the tribe. Okay, so it's the white men that changed the name. Do you realize that I don't want to, I'm on stage. So the white men changed the name and added an S and added that Y. But the real name, you know the name. So that name. Because our ancestors, the people from our clan, were the people that used to give healing. So the unwritten law was that nobody should study medicine. There is the formal medicine, because we are the doctors. Everyone that attempted it became schizophrenic. And that's why I told my daughter, can you help us? My own time, I, I, I did not study the medicine. So I cannot prove that we've defeated, can you help us study medicine? So that it will be, are you, are you? You are not following. Now, my cousin is at the back there. Her daughter is in Benin State University studying medicine. Strange symptoms have fallen on her. Symptoms that the doctors that are teaching her in school don't have a name for. This is after how many generations? Oh, you will be a child to say that authors lack power. The, the examples I'm giving you of is of living people, living human beings. I'm not reading from textbooks. From excellent young girl. So brilliant. But the day she now enters medicine, we didn't even know she would be able to write the last exam. She came and she even passed. I said, you passed? Okay, you will be a doctor. If God has chosen you to be the one to interpret this parable, there's a parable there. Oh my. Some of you don't know your history. I know my own. Because I wanted to fight, I had to go get knowledge. An innocent girl that doesn't know anything that is happening, me, I have a little idea. Right there in BSU. Comes under the influence of nervous situation, nerve, nervous, that even the neurologists cannot, they don't have a name for it. They took her to Abuja, put some things, at, like the kind of things they put on Robocop. Put. And after we spent all that money, they did not come up with any diagnosis. You want to use fiscal equipment to find spiritual things? Yeah, and if we don't do it, the mother will say, Oh, we are not it. So say, take, go on. We are dealing with what we need is a sacrifice. <laughs> oh my God. What we need is a sacrifice. I was standing before my brother who was in 300 level medicine. He ran mad before my face. I'm an eyewitness. Those things were the things that made me go into the forest to look for God. 200 and something days of fasting that kill me if you will not come out.
Most of you have not grown restless enough. Who told you that the, I was supposed to die at 13 years? Yes. Yes, I actually died. I, can, I will tell you that story in some time to come. Everywhere was dark. Let one necromancer arise in your family, there will be darkness forever. Except a priest of light comes. Forget about the positive thinking and the motivational thinking, trying to encourage you so that you don't, you don't become depressed. Let I tell you the truth. It's not who wants to be depressed, be depressed will deliver you and then you walk in the truth. Because without the truth, you can never be delivered. The motivational preacher will say, you look fine. Then you tell yourself, I look fine. I look fine. I look fine. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. Life is spiritual. <laughs> that psychological treatment, <coughs> we did it. I did it more than you. I will go on a football field and I will be telling, speaking to myself. They say it's faith declaration. The altar was even angry that I was talking. So I told God, it's time for you to kill me or make me wise. Make me understand the language that you speak. Because in a fasting and prayer like this, he said, someone in your family is going to die. I said, is there no way for the person to be redeemed? No, he said, the cup, the cup of iniquity is full. I said, yeah. He said, that's why he didn't speak all this while. He was waiting for that cup to be full so that they can begin judgment. I said, okay. So I called my brother. I said, uh, somebody's about to die. I, there's a brother of mine. I'm very close to him. So everything I see, I tell him. That death is coming. But this death is not a bad death. It's a good one. That will pave way for the things that God wants to do. Indeed, that death came. And then rise, people began to rise. The last of the necromancers was cut off. Oh my God. Have you ever read your Bible? It talks about the, the shadow of death. That's what is casted on a family when there is a necromancer in your midst. Samuel knew the sacrifice to offer. To move the hand of God. To turn the tide of darkness that was raging. I trust God this, this week that his hand will be moved. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are a lady here, let me tell you. Your prospects of marrying doesn't lie with your face. Aike Samona Igabo. Swame Kapakura. Doesn't lie with your physique. It doesn't lie with the level of education you have had. There is a scent of reproach that can be cast on you. And until you are 40 years, no man will say, Ah, you are beautiful. It will hide you. It's a concealing spell. In my own practice of ministry, I've seen it on many, many ladies. Those are signs of very, very potent altars that are still manipulating the destinies of men and marginalizing their possibilities. But if you know what sacrifice to offer, you can change the circumstances. Turn it by with me quickly. Second Kings, chapter 3, from verse 24 to verse 27. Still trying to build my case. Second Kings, chapter 3, from verse 24 to verse 27. And when they came to the camp of Israel... The Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites so that they fled before them. But they went forward smiting the Moabites even in their country. 25. And they beat down the cities and on every good piece of land cast every man his stone and filled it. And they stopped all the wells of water and felled all the good trees only in 
Kehasaret left the, the stones thereof. How be it, the slingers went about it and smote it. Next verse. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took him 700 men that drew swords. That was the last line of his defense to break through even unto the king of Edom, but they could not. And he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel and they departed from him and returned to their own land. I just wanted to show you that the principle of sacrifice is not only explored in the divine order of priesthood, it's also explored in the demonic order of priesthood. This is what we call the near miracle syndrome. They were already about to conquer the land of the Moabites. The king knew that defeat was staring him in the face. And what he did was that he took his son and sacrifice him on the wall. Instantly. It was according to the prescription of his supervising spirit. Instantly, the spirit realm became confused. And people that were so close to finishing the battle returned to their home. So when you see some symptoms in your life, it is proof, it is evidence of the fact that you are an altar is speaking. The first, first symptom that is suggestive of the fact that the demonic altar is speaking is called sustained confusion. Sustained confusion. Sustained confusion. It is not the will of God for a believer to be confused, but when you find a man in a state of sustained confusion, and I need to tell you this quickly, that it is possible for someone that is anointed to be plagued with confusion. There's an evidence that the hand of God is upon you, but a man is plagued with sustained confusion. It is suggestive of the fact that there is an altar that has been raised to fight him. Are you there? So we also have sustained disfavor. People do stuff, but when you attempt to do it, you will find out that <laughs> all the doors will be closed. To you. Sustained disfavor. And this sustained disfavor also has applications in relationship and marital matters. Sustained disfavor. Number three is unnatural poverty. The person is hardworking. The person is focused. But the works of the person's hands doesn't translate to anything that is profit. Doesn't translate to profit. When you see that, it is suggestive of a spiritual situation. Are you there? Lack of conception. Lack of conception. When there is difficulty in conception, are you following me? Okay, that's number one. Lack of 
conception. Then number five is what we call accident prone. Accident prone. Accident prone. You escaped one now, you escaped another one. A trailer fell, you just escaped narrowly. And every day you are giving testimony of how you are dodging, how you are escaping. Uh, accident prone. These are suggestions that a spirit being is haunting you. A spirit being knows your address, has been, he knows your name, he knows your location, and is trying seriously to exercise vengeance on your life. Accident prone. If you don't deal with that, then that's number what? Number six is the shadow of death, where there is an inner knowing that you will not live long. Inner knowing that death is accompanying you. There's an inner knowing of the presence of death around your life. These are suggestive suggestive of an active altar accompanying you. Maybe before the fast ends, I will tell you how to set up an altar for your business, just in case I'm seeing business people here. You have a responsibility of priesthood for your business. If you want to flourish, you want to prosper, there is a technology that you need to apply. Most of the other people that labor with you in the markets that you sell, that are prospering, they have an altar. Most of them. Most of them. They have an altar that is serviced every now and then to ensure that their prosperity is sustained. If you are going to labor in the economic war front, there is a strategy that you must, you must carry along with you, which is how to set up altars in the marketplace. I think that will be the last subject I will treat before the end of the series, even though I will not be able to finish the syllabus in these 40 days, but that is like the last aspect I will treat for this time. When this emphasis comes up again, we'll go into advanced technology. You see, you can do ministry, but what powers a ministry are altars, and I don't even want to go into the ministry aspect. You are struggling to buy a microphone. You are struggling to get a title to be consecrated as a bishop. If you don't know the altars that back up ministry, you'll be preaching behind closed gates. It's not your preaching that does anything. It is the gate that is open, that gives power to what you preach. The one we raise here that is responsible for our, our voice traveling it took 14 years to raise it. Yes, it took 14 years to raise it. So this one I can tell you by experience. That ministry doesn't just prosper. People don't just gather. People don't. There are too many preachers. Why, why should they listen to you? Some people came here and told me, the Lord encountered us after we you know, we served for so so years under this man of God and we were released to begin ministry. So we started, we got a hall, and then uh, we started preaching. But we've suffered, we've, in fact, we are all sick. We are medical. Who told you that ministry begins with platform and pulpit? You, are, you have not registered your priesthood in the realm of the spirit. There is no passage for you. The door you claim you open for people to come for service is locked. <laughs> you see, you know, because you were a campus fellowship president, and when you labored the, 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 the presence of God, operating on campus that has accumulated prayer is different from the make way that is the den of thieves. The moment you, you do those things you claim to be doing on campus, take it to them, you might even die at 45. 
Because that place is an unchallenged territory. Witchcraft have been trafficking there for as long as Jesus knows. You are coming to challenge that traffic, challenge the market, challenge who are you? And you have not set up an altar. Uh -uh. I'm telling you, the one we set up here took 14 years. 14 years of uncompromising sacrifice. Yes, the people were at 950 something. People were still trying to see me in the office. They don't know that. They don't know how long I've been praying that day. That is, it's, 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 it's not reasonable for you to be insisting that you want to see me at that time. You know how, how much sacrifice we put on the table? Before the presence of God breaks out, people get healed. People are touched. You like it? <laughs> the man sacrificed his son on the wall. Let me take you just one more point before I begin the job for the night. Just one more point. If there is anybody here, you see like someone like a madman in your dream, consistently, a madman. Right? If that kind of stuff you see. I'm not saying that God is telling me that. So I'm just telling you, because of my experience in counseling and in deliverance, I can tell you this for free. That if what you see is like someone that is mad, always following you around, what is happening to you is that someone has set up an altar and they have released the spirit of madness on your life. The day your liberty comes, in that dream, you will be able to confront the madman and say, Hey! From that day, that spirit will stop following you. Now, is there any, wait, is there anybody in this congregation that can relate with what I just said about a madman following you? ST? Now, give us the microphone. Sometimes when we teach these things, it's so abstract, people don't even believe it exists. Esty, please help us. But please come up the stage so that they will not say we are creating one voice inside the congregation. Come, it's a living human being. And this ST, we met at work in the office in Abuja. This, we started Bible study that time. So I know this believer. She's an old Christian. When did you give your life to Christ? Please. 1992. In 1992. Okay, so this is an old believer. So please tell us your, your story. Hallelujah. So it started in 1999, in my final year. I started having, I noticed this would like to say thoughts, inability to control my mind. To coordinate your mind. Yes, that was my final year. Now that's so. the confusion that I'm talking about. The law, the law that the priest that is governing their family put in, I'm just interpreting what she's saying. The law that they put in place, which are unwritten laws, you may not know. One of those laws might be that no one should maybe make a first class. No one should make second class up. And if it is as though you want to make second class up, some strange symptoms will now follow you. What did you score? Second class upper. Second class upper. So when, when it's as if you want to violate that limitation that was set in, in motion by this altar, those symptoms, and she is, it came on her as a believer. Is it so? Okay, go on. So I, I... Now, listen. You don't have... These curses, these things that judgments that come from these altars, it is possible for you as a believer to see the symptoms of their presence on your life. Are you there? It's possible. In some cases, it may not even manifest, but in some cases, it can manifest. And if it does manifest, it means... 
there is, you need to set up your own altar to counteract that altar that is manifesting in your life. Okay, please. So the whole of first semester I was contending with it, just managing it. After the first semester, I didn't go home because it was really, so I, anyway, bottom line, I had to um, push my final semester one year ahead. And there were these, you know, attacks, attacks, a lot of, I couldn't finish with my mates. That's what I'm saying. I had to come back. So, but subsequently, after all that, I started having this dream. A mad person will be chasing me. Either a mad woman, a mad boy, a mad girl, a was, mad you man. You were a believer? Yes, sir. And you spoke in tongues? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> it started in 1999. Now, now, don't just think she was just a normal believer. She, a consecrated believer. I know this lady, we worked in the same office. The, a real consecrated Jesus field believer. Had this masquerade, uh, uh, mad, mad guys chasing her all around in those spiritual experiences. Yes, it started in 1999, so it kept on like that. I was praying and to no avail. It was not until 2016, sir. Now, but you made your 2 1. Yes, sir. So I, she yes. broke, because she I, broke that law that they didn't want her to break. I discovered. That's one year I took from school. They were taking me to a number of places, and it was getting progressively diabolical. Okay, so and they then, were, apart from the Jesus solution, they took her to... <laughs> they were starting to take me to places that I knew were not it. And if you are trying to say, please, mommy, don't, let's not do this. It looks like they will say, you, you are, are the you one are the, you are the wizard that is trying life. to withhold your solution, you know, withhold your deliverance. So Let me say this at this point. You cannot use Satan to quench Satan. If you go to look for help from Satan, it's an insult to God. God is going to take his hands off your life yeah. and allow you to run the rat race. Mm -hmm. So, so the last thing wait. Let's discuss as as your beloved mommy was taking you to places. The symptoms increased. Yes, it, they it were. They were still there. Okay. So the last two places were more or less like white garment, <laughs> white garment, white garment pastors also. that had kept their white <laughs> and were now on Pentecostal <laughs> pulpits. <laughs> Because you know, <laughs> I stayed, I stayed in the facility so you could see what these guys were doing behind the scene. And in fact, it was God that had mercy on me. I'm telling you, God. Oh, had you mercy stayed on me. in the yes, the God, last the, the, two the and God had mercy on me. That God had mercy on me. <laughs> That's the bottom line. So the, the summary is that God, God had <laughs> mercy. I was not. May a, the Lord give you understanding. I was to, not a victim. To know this. You know, so when, when and may God have mercy on you. <laughs> so I insisted that I had to. I now made up my own mind that this thing, I'm not going to allow it go beyond this. Now, now make level. up your mind tonight. It, it's possible for you to make up your mind. Yes, you went here, you went here, you did this, you did. Just make up your mind. Yes. If you can make up your mind, yes. this week, this week, as we journey together, this week, the Lord will touch, he will touch that matter. He will touch it. Because like I said, I saw that it was deteriorating and I knew that if I allow this thing to continue, it's going to take another turn that's, it's going to get ugly. So I decided, I said, no, it's okay. I'm not allowing this to continue. So I went back to school, I finished. But the, the, that dream persisted. That was when the dream actually started, you know? So, so how did it the continued. dream stop? That, that's where I'm going. So in 2016, that's from 1999, that was 17 years. Yes, I shared this testimony then when we were intense. In 2016, in the dream one night, I saw that I was running as usual. 
you know, this time it was a mad woman that was chasing me and I was running. So as I was running in the dream, I started hearing in my spirit, how long will you run, Tony? How long? If you keep on running like this, this is how you might end up running all your life. Why don't you turn around and face this thing once and for all? That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to so, turn around and we will face it. Yes, sir. So as I was... The day you gain, you gain sufficient masculinity and you decide that I want to face this, you will discover that the thing that you are running away from is actually afraid of you. Yes? So I started thinking to myself, I said it's true. So in the dream, I turned around and faced the woman. And when I turned around and faced her, she was surprised. You know, she was taken aback. She, she just, as in, she just fell, you know, missed her step. The devil is not step. expecting that you'll be bold enough to confront her. Yes. He's expecting that you will use the cheap way out. You keep running. You keep fleeing from him. But if you find that courage to stand against him, you'll just find that he doesn't have as much capacity as he claims that he has. So, when I turned around, what I discovered was that the Holy Ghost took over. I just found that scriptures, I just started speaking the word of God to this woman. Now, and believe you the me. The moment you turn around, then the Holy Ghost will take over. The moment you decide that enough is enough, the Holy Spirit will take over. The moment you say, okay, I cannot continue this way, the Holy Ghost will take over. And sincerely, I must confess, the scriptures that were coming, I didn't even know where they were coming from. It's like he just took over my vocal cords. I didn't know these scriptures, but I knew it was the word of God. And I was just speaking and speaking. So the, the more I was speaking to the woman, she was dissolving. <laughs> she fell and was like entering the ground, you know, dissolving into the ground. And I spoke and woke up. And that was the end of it. That was the end of it. All right, let me give you one scripture. Yeah, you can go back with it. I have my own. Uh, you can add that. You can add. There's another aspect of this reality that you need to be acquainted with. I, I am insisting that she should uh, bring that Amen. aspect up. So this... Yeah. While this was going on, I um, there was a relationship. She had a relationship with a young man. A young, man. <laughs> a young man came and said he wanted to get married to me. And sincerely, much later, the Lord started giving me understanding. Um, we didn't go all the way like this thing, but we actually started doing some things that were. Not right in the sight no. of the Lord. And I thank God. We didn't arrive at the destination, but <laughs> the Lord, the Lord help. The Lord, the help. <laughs> so I just want to thank God because later the Lord gave me understanding that it's like whatever the person did, if I had yielded, if I had done that, if I had gone on that route then this affliction that madness would have, would have, would have in fact place. the fact that that guy was in her life was what kept the madness may you be bold enough to break free from anything entangling your soul fighting for the place of the lord in your life you see god the holy spirit will be telling you you will feel it that this this is not what i have made for you but you know as a grown-up girl of your age you don't want to look like someone that is without a man that is interested in you. So you believe that this society, it is socially correct for someone to be hanging around your life. That person hanging might be the open door through which Satan is hanging. Clear the space so that the real one can come in the name of Jesus. May the Lord help us. Now this is the... What I want you to see before we pray, can you turn your Bible to Acts chapter 23? Acts chapter 23. We'll read from verse number 12. 
And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves with a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Now, these people have taken, there are sacrifices that they have decided to take on. Because it is, it is why did they have to bind themselves with, that, with an oath that they will not eat or drink? Saying that they wanted to kill Paul as assassins was enough trouble. But they added sacrifice to it. They added sacrifice to it because they were not just attempt. They know that Paul is a spiritual person, so they need to put some sacrifice on the table to get spiritual backing, so that they can kill Paul. And as long as they refuse to kill, they have not killed Paul. The sacrifices will continue. This is the determination that witches use. This is the determination that men of darkness use to hunt their prey. But the average Christian is a freestyle person. He doesn't understand the way of sacrifice. And so he never ascends into great intensity in the things of the Spirit. If someone takes an oath that he will not eat or drink until you are dead, how do you fight that person? Have you thought about it? And you, you want to eat everything. You see mangoes. You see, see mango. See mango. <laughs> everything is attractive to you. Everything. Meanwhile, someone has taken an oath. We will not eat. We will not drink until we have killed. You also take a note. You also become determined. You also have a position of sacrifice in view. Oh my God. Can we pray? I take my stand. You are going to take a stand in the spirit. That your ministry will not just break through like that. No. You will take an oath. You will take a stand. You will bring sacrifice on the table. You will bring sacrifice on the table. On the table. The question tonight is what do you bring? What do you bring? What do you bring? What do you bring? God brought his son. That king killed his son on the wall. What do you bring? What do you bring? Uh, oh my, are you that determined? Are you that determined? Are you that determined that this year, this year, this year, this year, the changes that you seek will begin to happen? Are you that determined that the changes we seek in Nigeria will begin to, to find expression? Are you that determined? What do you bring? What do you bring? What do you bring? What do you bring? I bring the sacrifice, the sacrifice of, of prayer. I bring the sacrifice of fasting. I bring the sacrifice of night prayer. Night prayer. I take sleep from my eyes. I will only eat afflicted bread. Something like Gary. Not because I cannot afford anything I want. But I bring something on the table. My, my, my adventure into the realm of the spirit is not without sacrifice. Oh, what do you bring? What do you bring? What do you bring? Is it true that you want to turn the tables? You want to turn the tables? You want the finger of the enemy to break concerning your life? What do you bring? Kosile mokora Baita bonsami La abras kito bokonete Escobre masila abarantolo, Ramena y seca bosqueta binda, 
Asala bunda e prescate bonde. Jaminai ta kombe galato. O preske si kobandola. Si kobandeli makadia. Jama kanta baboke skavelata. Jai kombali. Jai la saka bonde. Lesko brege dalisko balatula. Alando ndesi. Alando kandeli basu. E preska tamonda. E preska teliba. Asai kompanda. Alata kesko te pre. Mansela ego. Mansela salebonda. Lebrosketa prakatala. Ai kasandeli. Ai kalabonda shakatande koske. Rako sami. What do you bring? 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 Say eco pamba. I scobres. Isca bres. Laca bres. Yanta bres. Yaka cose mandale. Rata baboko sata. Escobronde. Jamina cantelia. Abreca sute mantala. Bacandesa. Abrascata la babona. Ayato. 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 Mainta. Escobe. La brescata boga bansela. Alaika santeni. Abrasca tokendo. Amena ile. Amena sadebonda. Amena santa baboria. Abranta bayeko scadebanta. Escobe la itele. Manda cora askita. Meca bandele. Alla bronza azezali. Alai sose. Alai cantama. Alai carabasupre. Alai sansela. A branda baboconda, a laisa sala conde basi, a boseli, a la cobranda baboke macadia, a la soseca brantelli, a leco bocoria, la si se amaya, corasi, racapandaia, a se copre, la casobria tapaboma cantelli, a bresco tapandelia, a bracabama basata, a branta co, ayamola. A planta babasi, a la cora, a la santa planta baboleba, a la cora, semina cadia planta bayato, a la cora, escobe, a la boga santo, a la mantala babola cadia, a planta baseca tamina cande babo, a nasque, a la tacandelia, e presa mocata, a planta bayeto sono, e cayeto santola, e cayanta babora, cavalata planta baboria. Eso se mante cola a la brosqueta for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave, he gave. There must be a sacrifice. I am ready to stand before you for 20 nights, for 40 nights. I will stand in the night, I will stand in the night. Offer him something. Offer him something. Offer him something. Hey, suaba mala, rakaba la chande, rase so se ba la koda matuala, aya konsa mene kente le ba kuria brante mina, aso se rakaba la bas, rakama chala ba boya, eska bata mina kadia, arakansa chala ba bote kanseli. A breta conda, a semina, a semina, la aisa, la orama, la coreme santo, a presco boco core, escapila cande, escapranda babora cade basi, rata bossa mena cadia planta baiecosa, a brasi, a broscate la bondo, a la brosca bene matalia, e la cande babondo, a la uasse. Uasalo, 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 alesalo, aleman sele, aleman monde, aleman sanda, aleman konda, aleman sanda, aleman sakata. Yaila la vos, ora masaka paya, eskopre, ma alatado kambo, rasketo de la kadeade, elande kende, eyanta maboria. Rama Satala, Ela Gosa, Ela Mande, Ela Kade Bonsa, Ela Branda Babakaya, Ela Kura Masande, Atrescope Baita, 
Papa Kolo, Papa Sabahola, Raka Pasanta Prescote, Mamena Ila, Raka Bonsabe, Rahasketo Bade, Raka Bartala, Raka Bartala, Raka Basala Babota Bataya, Abriala Babota, Abriala Basanta, Abranda Babota Kanda, Abranda Basita, Abakota, Alabanda Lava Boria. Alamasata, <laughs> Lasasa, <laughs> Abrespote in the name of Jesus. My wife was pregnant for our first son and the expected date of delivery had elapsed and nothing was happening. So I, I said, okay, let me pray in the night. First night, I stood to pray. My eyes were open. Then I saw someone with, you know, this straw cap that farmers wear. And the person bent the face like this so that the eyes, the face would not come out. So I said, it is you that doesn't allow, that doesn't want to allow this woman to deliver. When I said that, labor started. See, in a spiritual warfare, when you bring your sacrifice and you begin to administer it, maybe your sacrifice is, I will wake up in the night, cut my sleep, donate part of my sleep. Sometimes, are you there? All right, so that's your own sacrifice. So you start with your own sacrifice until he comes. When he comes, he's likely to prescribe his own sacrifice. That's why I'm asking you, what do you bring? For some of us, our own fasting will continue beyond 40 days. Because we are bringing something. And we will sustain it until he comes. When he comes, you will know. It can decide to flood your dream with an encounter. It can decide to give you an open vision, but God cannot come for you not to know. It comes either to show you a wisdom, this is what to do, or to prescribe a sacrifice so that you can achieve equilibrium in the realm of the spirit. He comes to enlighten your eyes. Just like he came in Tonya's life and said, how long will you be running? Oh, oh my capo. The same God that, is, that was quickening her to confront that day can also say, stand still. And you will see the salvation of God. When he comes, he comes with wisdom. But don't stay without an, an answer. 
If you decide to stay without an answer, it means you have no altar. You have decided to live without an altar. Your altar lacks power without a sacrifice. My question tonight is, what do you bring? I brought 264 days of fasting. Once upon a time. And he came. It is because of that is coming that I was able to break beyond the limits that is in my family. He gave me some prescriptions. I've lived by them till this day. Today my life is as though those things don't exist in my family. Because he, he gave me a sacrifice to begin to offer. And that sacrifice, he spoke better things than the sacrifices that have been offered today. What do you bring? What do you bring? What do you bring? What do you bring? Do not be without a sacrifice. It means you have no voice in the realm of the spirit. It's just like someone that doesn't have air time. And there's an emergency and then you press and say, ah, ah, ah. It was in the airport that a woman was asking, can you give me your phone to make a call? It is strange. If you, if you are serious at all, you have money to pay for ticket, you don't have air time. No, no, no. no it was not. No, you are not okay. You are not okay. And that's how people don't have air time for their destiny. There's no prepaid sacrifice for, to prosecute the interaction and the transactions of their destiny. What do you bring? What do you bring? I will not stand before you without a sacrifice. I will not un offer unto God that which costs me nothing. You want to get the attention of a spirit? Please answer that question before I sit down. What do you bring? Answer it in your prayer. Answer it. Answer it. Because this year, your life will, will no longer be empty. You've, you've had no sacrifice. All this while, it is time for you to begin to do spiritual business. This is what I bring. I will stand before you. The challenge you had five years ago, you still have that challenge now. It's because you are not serious. You are not serious. You have not grown restless. You are still comported, sit ordering your life. No, Satan will waste your life. He will waste your time. He will waste your existence. This is what I pray. I will stand before you. I will stand before you. I will stand before you. Yes. I will not give my eyes sleep. I will not give my eyes sleep. I will labor. I will labor in your presence. Calling upon your name. Tell him what you will bring. Tell him, tell him. You can change that your child, that your child that you think is a vagabond, you can break the spirit over him. You can break that spirit. A priest must have a sacrifice. Your altar is powered by the sacrifice that you bring. 